Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster, along with Andrew Murphy. Our topic today is the future of Apple product release events. And this is a multi-layered topic. The first layer of this is around business travel and how we think about business travel. And we think that over the next few years that we're going to see about a third reduction from uh, pre-pandemic levels in business travel. And the segment that's going to be most impacted by that, we think is around business travel for education purposes. We still think travel for sales purposes is going to be strong, but because of that, I think people are just going to want to travel less and that impacts Apple events because a part of their events are educating people, releasing products in the sense is a form of education. And so that is the high level about business travel. And I want to shift and focus on Apple events. And Andrew, can you just tell us, give us a history of uh, why Apple does these events? Yeah, first, want to agree with you that um, I think things are forever changed. We won't look back on the pandemic as a period where things were a little different for a while. I think we'll look at it as the point in time at which everything changed. And, and of course, that includes conferences well and events, business travel, and events where marketing is really the core of the opportunity for the company like these Apple events. And like you said, educating the world. Um, and that's really uh, gets to the heart of why they do these. I think if you go back to some of those original events where Apple created a category and Steve Jobs, who is the ultimate showman, and would enthrall people in the uh, reality distortion field. During these events, it was a live on stage event with, uh, it was a show with mm -hmm. uh, beautiful keynote visuals and product demos. The, the point uh, it too was to capture some of the culture around secrecy and surprises that Apple uh, By the way, I wanna in, in jump in there that the showmanship on this is the way I would express it is these were hour and a half events and people stayed for them. They stayed engaged. And that is a really hard thing to do. Think how many people you can listen to for an hour and a half. Uh, Steve Jobs. Yeah, Don't really need me to enumerate it, but uh, we miss him. Yeah. And it was around unveiling products for the first time there was secrets that had been held for years sometimes as they developed these products. And when it, in kind of a, a smaller Apple world, they could unveil it for the first time and show pictures and demonstrate it for the first time, uh, products that people had never seen before. Now with the supply chain growing so large and with just the uh, ecosystem behind these products uh, being so expansive, the surprises are fewer. But the critical element of setting the narrative for a product is still the same. And okay. or even more important, if you've seen a leak or seen an image uh, rendering, now Apple gets their chance to tell the story of a product. And I think that's the critical moment or uh, the critical point around these events. And the- So can, the can I interrupt and- changed, it, So the ahead. change shifts from the- unveiling a product to a narrative, but talk about the actual event itself. How do you think they think about the, maybe the content of events? Yeah. In well, what I wonder is, do they see it as a product itself, the event? Mm -hmm. and the short answer, as I've considered it, is no. They do want everything they do to, be, to reflect the kind of care that they take with their products, of course. Every visual, every video, every demo, every keynote presentation has to hit that product standard that they care so much about. But these events are not products. They are an opportunity to share and shine the spotlight on the products that they're launching. So the way that the events have changed from a live onstage show to a more highly produced video format that they're doing now, um, kind of putting on display the parts of their campus and the beauty of Apple Park, they are now allowed in this more highly produced world to really set that narrative. And I think it works really well for the newer purpose of these events. So if narrative is the purpose, then a produced environment probably is a better way to achieve that. That's right. And let's shift to looking forward is how are these events going to look? How many times frequency, location? As a reminder, they typically do three events per year. 
and this is pre-pandemic in-person, three in-person events. This year has been four events that have been online. And I think that when we put this together and uh, think about the future, ultimately is we expect that they're gonna do more events. So think of it as maybe five per year, but less of them in person. So if it used to be three in person, maybe it goes to two or potentially even one. Yeah, and there is, a, pardon? And probably shorter. Probably shorter, yeah. That's been one nice, I think they typically go 45 minutes versus the hour and a half uh, previously makes a ton of sense. And so that is the kind of the cadence around the, the events. And my question is, what are the pros and cons? If that's the case, that's my view where they're going to end up. What are the pros and cons of, let's say, again, going from uh, three in person to one or two in person and a total of five events up from three? Well, if you take it that they're, if you, if you assume like we, we believe they're going to do more shorter events, it's around, first of all, the pro of focusing people more acutely on a single product instead of a two hour long live event to unveil three different products. Yeah, you can dig in a lot better with these. Yeah, you can like this year, the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro and Mac Mini got their own event, which really allowed Apple to shine a light on that product. And that Makes unveiling sense. Mac had its moment, which a lot of people have been waiting for. The con though, of course, is how many can you do? How much can you keep people's attention? How much prime time availability is there in terms of mind share for Dilution, Apple to keep basically. Our attention? Yeah, that's right. Makes sense, pros and cons. I do, uh, we do study, we've studied this company for a long time. They, as you mentioned before, they approach everything with a level of detail and thoughtfulness. And ultimately I think whatever what they strike, they're probably gonna get to that right balance. Something tells me they're gonna do it right in the future. And I'm excited to see how this plays out. I'm also excited to return to at least one of these events per year in person. Andrew, thanks for weighing in. On behalf of Andrew, on behalf of myself, Gene, and Loop TV, bye for now.